Hello everyone, and yes, it's me again. Uh, sorry about all the notifications, but uh, what can I do? Uh, all the games are, are incredibly interesting. So we are at game four of the Magnus Invitational match between Nakamura and Carlsen. Carlsen leading two to one, and Nakamura needs to win on demand now. Carlsen was able to win both of his games with the white pieces in the exact same line, and uh, Nakamura, uh, of course, uh, won the game where, where Carlsen went for the Arkhangelsk uh, in the Rui Lopez. So here for the fourth game, Nakamura sticks the e4, but Carlsen already deviates and he goes for c5, the Sicilian. And okay, we have knight to f3, uh, we have e6, d4, c captures on d4, knight captures, and knight to f6. Uh, we have knight to c3, Magnus goes for d6, uh, we have bishop to e3, and bishop to e7, basically the, the, this havening variation of the Sicilian. Uh, and f4 by Nakamura. This is all very standard. Knight to c6, uh, and now queen to f3, preparing to castle queenside. Uh, and here we have e5, uh, most popular move for black. We have knight captures, b captures, uh, and here f5 is the move that is uh, most often played here, but Nakamura goes for the very, very rare bishop to c4. He has to trick Carlsen somehow, uh, and Magnus decides that uh, before castling he's just gonna shift his knight over to g4. It makes sense as uh, it comes with an attack on the bishop. Of course Nakamura doesn't want to give up the dark square bishop. So we have bishop to d2, and now again before castling, first captures on f4, clearing the e5 square for the knight, and the knight will be uh, uh, very, very much needed there, as you'll see. So bishop captures, now Magnus castles, uh, Nakamura decides to castle qu uh, kingside instead, not to go for a queenside castle, and bishop to f6 now. And although uh, Nakamura has the semi-open f-file with a lot of pressure here, uh, towards the f7 pawn, Magnus says that it's not an issue, as he already has his knight nicely placed here, and once he shifts him over to e5, uh, that's uh, all he needs. And uh, there is one game in the database where king to h1 was played, but here we have bishop to b3, and it is as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so, like I said, Magnus not uh, really worried about the f7 weakness, so he goes rook to e8, and now rook a to d1, with ideas of maybe pushing e5 at some point, so just knight to e5. And that's the idea behind that knight to g4 maneuver, just shifting it over to e5. Queen to g3, and now comes bishop to a6, attacking Nakamura's rook here. And this is where our, uh, well, the game started uh, long before, but this is where the fun uh, part starts. Uh, here, instead of moving the rook, Nakamura plays bishop captures on e5. And okay, uh, here uh, we have bishop captures on e5, uh, uh, or you could go for bishop captures on f1, but then you get bishop captures on f6, threatening checkmate, and once queen captures, you're gonna get rook captures on f1, and white uh, has two pieces for the rook, which is of course much better, and there's still all this pressure towards the f7 pawn. So it would be a winning position for white. Uh, so instead, after bishop captures on e5, Carlsen recaptures, attacks Nakamura's queen, uh, we have bishop captures on f7 with check, king to h8, and now, uh, as your queen is still under attack, feel free to pause the video and once again find Nakamura's move while I give you a couple of seconds. So once again, congratulations for to everyone who knows that this is position the position from the thumbnail. And again, we have a, a, a Zwischenzug, a, a nice in-between move, uh, as the title would suggest. Uh, and here, before deciding what to do with the queen, bishop captures on e8. Point being that now, if uh, you go for the queen, Nakamura has rook to f8 checkmate, as the bishop blocks, of course, the queen's um, uh, well uh, path to the f8 square. So uh, this. This uh, obviously rattled uh, Magnus a little bit, because here you have to go for uh, a bishop captures on f1. Uh, and only after rook captures, now you r remove it with queen to b6 check, king h1, and now you pick up the bishop with rook captures here. Now white moves the queen and the game continues, while Nakamura would still be threatening mate, so you'd have to go for something like g6 and so on. The game continues. However, Magnus went for queen to b6 check right away, but now Nakamura blocks with the queen. Of course, uh, you can't leave the queen hanging. And now comes rook captures on e8. Again, bishop captures on f1 is the correct way to go. You have to grab that rook, otherwise you're just gonna be uh, down the exchange. Uh, but that's exactly what Magnus did. He played rook captures on e8, and now Nakamura just grabbed the queen. Queen captures, pawn captures, and now he just moved the rook, rook to f7. And after all is said and done, Nakamura is up the exchange. 
So, okay, h6 by Magnus, uh, and now rook to c7, just going after those juicy pawns. Uh, we have c5, and now rook to c6, going after this pawn. And here, it's incredibly hard to play. And especially Magnus was very sad that he missed uh, such a tactic. And, uh, well, here he just... Uh, uh, I, I don't think he uh, he even cared about the game all that much. Bishop to d4 check, king h1, he captured on c3 uh, to grab the e4 pawn as well. Uh, but Nakamura just uh, continues happily gobbling up pawns. Rook captures on b6 with bishop to c4. And if you could somehow get, uh, uh, for example, to the g2 pawn, maybe you could still do something. But Nakamura just starts pushing his past a pawn. We have rook to e2, but now just uh, rook b captures on d6. Rook captures on c2, and now, of course, rook to a1. Nakamura puts the rook behind the pass pawn. Carlson grabs the c3 pawn, and now just a5. And it was in this position that uh, Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. And incredible, Nakamura wins on demand. Uh, so, uh, really incredible stuff out of four games, all four decisive games. Uh, both, uh, both Hikaru and uh, Magnus winning with white, uh, white pieces both times. Uh, and now, of course, they go into Armageddon. Uh, so stay tuned, we're going to check that out as well. And uh, really, really uh, crazy stuff. Uh, Magnus really outmaneuvered Hikaru uh, in the games that where Magnus was white, but Nakamura really crushed Carlsen in the games that he was white. First, that nice checkmate on E5, uh, and then, uh, well, just this. Uh, again, with, with the beautiful Tsushinsug, so... Uh, very good stuff. So we're gonna cover the Armageddon game and then we are on to covering Alireza versus Ding, but I will most likely do those uh, tomorrow before we start round two. Well, round one, day two, basically. So, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Pierre Asaf, uh, Andreas Mikalovsky, Dominic Robson, Anturanga Tantra, and Kian Paya for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Magnus Invitational until it finishes. So, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.